Hi guys, it's Matthias, and today's video is inspired by another streamer named Ender, who uh, made a video about stream sniping, both against himself as a streamer, and also about some of the other streamers in the Battlefield 2042 community who had shared their experiences with him. Now, me myself, I don't have any information that I can share about other people's experiences, so what I want to dedicate this video to is uh, how it has, uh, well, how it started, I guess, and how stream sniping and harassment has progressed throughout the years. And the fact of the matter is, the obsessive behavior that I started noticing, it started happening long before I was a streamer, and that is in the game Planet Side 2, which I quit playing in 2014. Now, on a side note here, the dogfight you see here is actually with an obsessive stream sniper that really wants to prove himself. He himself is practicing dogfighting with other players, and he knows that I don't. And this was quite similar in Planetside 2. Before I started practicing, uh, well, it's not really dogfighting, it's hover fights or one versus one, with different Nobody's terminology. Before I started, people were obsessed about challenging me once I got to the, I guess, top five, or I was actually, I believe I was the second best pilot at a uh, period of time. And then people didn't want to challenge me anymore, so uh, the pattern still remains. Now, what's unusual about this stream sniper is that he actually, after only a few weeks of uh, consistent stream sniping, he actually admitted that he was stream sniping. Now, we all knew it, everybody watching the stream and myself, but for the most part, people lie about it and they pretend that they just happened to come across me on the server and that everything just happened randomly as part of the game. So in the early days of me as a YouTuber playing Planetside 2, some guys started noticing that one specific name always showed up in every video as a teammate and uh, eventually we, we recognized that he really wanted to play with me and uh, the guys I was playing with, so we let him join in the fun. And uh, the problem with this guy was that as time progressed, he constantly had a bigger and bigger need for attention, always going for the same target as me, always being in my way, always flying in and crashing into me, uh, hunting the same target as me, and it is... If you, if you haven't seen this yourself, it's this obsessive need to prove yourself, the obsessive need to get attention, no matter what, attention, attention, attention. And eventually, I had to kick him out of the uh, community or our, um, what's it called? Uh, our outfit, that's how it's called in Planet Side. And normally, this is how it starts basically every time. Almost everyone that I know about who are stream snapping me are people that want to play with me or even have played with me because they want the attention and they always pretend to be cool guys and they uh, seem to be friendly and helpful but as things progresses the need for attention gets stronger and stronger the need for recognition gets stronger and stronger and it absorbs everything that has anything to do with the game and makes it unbearable to play anymore now the most common advice i get from people is that if you just ignore them if you don't give them attention then they're eventually just gonna get bored and get away no that's not gonna happen I have more than 10 years of experience trying this, and in Planetside 2, especially with this guy in the beginning, that's exactly what I did. I did that with like, I don't know, 50, 100 people in Planetside 2. Unfortunately, things just get worse and worse and worse. What I come to realize is that if these people don't get the attention that they need, then they get extremely angry about it, and they do anything they can in order to get it. If they do get the attention, then whatever attention they get, they need more the next time, and then they need more the next time, and then they need more the next time. And what it, this can be all well and good for a certain period of time. The problem is that these people are the kind of people that get really, really hard to deal with, and they behave really, really bad when things don't go their way. And unfortunately, that may also get their attention. So... 
one of the problems with these people is that you can't expect these people to be normal people. Just think about all the weird people, all the all those uh, annoying people that you meet throughout your you know school work. There's always this guy that you know you're forced to kind of um, be friendly with, or that you kind of ha- have to hang out with because he's in your class or because he's at your work. But you wouldn't want to hang out with him if you have a choice. Now, these are the people that are drawn to me and other streamers, the, the people that you want to stay away from. It seems to me also that these people, for the most part, have something bad going on in their, uh, yeah, in their social life. Um, probably something, they probably have a hard time talking to people, but uh, that, from my behalf, is only speculation. And I don't have all that much information. I got bits and pieces here and there. Now, the thing about Planetside 2 was that I had a really hard time dealing with a lot of the things. I, I had a really hard time dealing with lies. That's what I had a hard time with. I, I find it, and it took me a long time before I could realize that people were, like, that, that, that it's so common with people that you think they are your friends and people that in many aspects seem like mature, normal people have no problem lying about things that are obvious. This is something that has taken me a long time to understand. And being a streamer, the, this is what this is one of the things that being a streamer and being harassed has taught me. The amount of effort that pe- people can put in to their lies, even when it is obvious. I sometimes think back to some of the discussions that I had with some of the people in the community when they denied this and when they lied about it. And uh, what's interesting about this also is that I then later, in the next game I played, had it confirmed that these people not only lied about it and knew about it, but also actually some of the people that I thought were my friends, they got apparently very jealous over the attention I had, and they even helped some of my harasses by giving away my position, what I'm doing, and then they... um, Instead of, you know, acting like normal teammates and, you know, killing the enemies the way you do, they let people get a free pass to kill me and, uh, you know, kill me from a, um, an unexpected angle that I thought they had my back and they, they gave away my position and they promised my, the harassers not to do anything, not to kill them uh, in order to, uh, for them to get a kill on me. And this happened repeatedly, actually. And it's really hard, especially as a, stre- as a non-streamer at the time, it was really hard to prove it. But this is something that I, I later had confirmed when I moved to the next game. You see, after I played Planetside 2, I moved to another game made by the same company called H1Z1. And after spending some time in H1Z1, I, actually in the, in the beginning of H1Z1, um, I lost... I would say about three quarters of my regular views, you know, switching to another game. And for a long time, I could kind of play like a normal player, just uh, not getting any attention whatsoever as a YouTuber. But uh, as my uh, content got more and more recognition, as my popularity grew in H1Z1, so did also the need for attention from similar type of people. Now, after some time of playing H1Z1, I met up with a guy that I used to play against in Planetside 2. And uh, it's also important to point out that this is, even though th- this is, there's a lot of people that do this, a lot of people that are attention seekers, and the, the, the most people that I talk to and the most people that want to play with me are legit cool guys like the ones of you watching my streams and uh, watching my videos most people are cool guys and I actually ran into one of these guys while playing H1Z1 a guy that was in a rival outfit in Planetside and we started playing together we had a lot of fun together and we talked about this and that and eventually after some time we got into Planet Side 2, we talked about Planet Side 2, and at that time, all the drama that uh, had occurred in Planet Side 2 was kind of like water under the bridge, and it was never actually bad with this particular guy, even though it was pretty bad with some of his uh, clone mates or outfit mates or whatever you want to call it. So, what he said was that 
not only like he, he told me about the situation and it was probably hundreds of times worse than the worst scenario that I ever talked about I mean there was hundreds maybe thousands of people simultaneously looking for me arranging and coordinating their hunt for me and uh, in Planetside a squad is like I think 12 people and a platoon is four squads that's how I remember it anyway and there are chat systems for platoon leaders so they can talk to one another and they were ignoring the game only to hunt me with full platoons multiple of them and this guy that I met later on in H1C1, he was second in command in one of these outfits. Not the worst one when it comes to hunting me, but pretty pretty up there. So uh, it was very interesting to hear his details. I, that, that could have been a long video. I, I regret not interviewing him about it or recording that conversation. So now, after some time, things uh, started heating up in H1Z1 as well. And there was especially one group of people, who were actually Swedish people, that really, 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 I did, it's, it's funny, it's hard to explain this. They really wanted to join my community. I, had a, I was playing with a couple of guys. Actually, some of them were also from Planetside 2. And they always came to our base asking to join us. And I was like, nah, we were too many people. Uh, it's a little bit this and that. And I don't really know you and all that stuff. And also at the same time, some of my teammates always trolled them and killed them and all that stuff. But uh, eventually, um, we was like, okay, fine. We're, we're, we'll build your base here and we'll all be friends and we'll all play together. And I told them that if you do this, if you do this, you are going to be raided because you build your bases and you raid other bases and we always planned for that so that when people raided our bases they got basically nothing because we had hidden bases that that's how you have to do it as a content creator at least i had to do it uh, i mean you can build bases they take a lot of time that are harder to raid but anyway that's how we do it did it so what happened was that uh, there was a, uh, a couple of YouTubers or at least one YouTuber that really wanted my attention or w wanted to like collaborate. That's what they say when they want me to boost their channels. And I actually was going to help uh, a couple of these guys out because some of them were quite uh, legit. But they, it was a little bit, there, there was a couple of bad vibes I got and uh, the arrangement was a little bit too tedious. So I never really actually got around to it. Now, one of them, of course, raided my newfound friend's base. And these guys had promised me that, yeah, there's no problem. We don't care if they raid our base. It's okay. It's no problem. It's just a game. Nothing's going to happen. And uh, we're all well prepared for it and all that stuff. And, of course, when they got raided, they got absolutely furious about it. They, they, went, they started attacking uh, one of my friends completely out of nowhere. They, they knocked on the door. And when he opened the door, the door he just sh uh, shot them, stuff like that. They, they behaved like completely. They, it was it was unreal. And what also um, was found is that when they raided this base, and I I had never actually been in that base, which was a big mistake on my behalf. But um, the guy that raided their base and made a video about it, he also found that they had made a bit of a like a swastika with uh, some. Uh, yeah, they, they, it's a little bit vague if that was actually what it was or whatever. But what's important to point out is that what um, happened with that was that everybody accused me about it. Whether, whether that was a swastika or not, whether they did it on purpose or not, that was completely irrelevant. The only focus on Reddit, on YouTube, everywhere, every forum, all this stuff, was that Matti plays with Nazis. Matti this, Matti that. I've never even been there. They joined me, they, we tried to get rid of them, and eventually we said yes. And then when they make this kind of behavior, of course, everybody blames me. And it was, it, and this is something that started in, actually it did start in Planetside when some people misbehaved and they kind of, try to find a way to uh, put the blame on me but uh, it was something that escalated tremendously in H1Z1 where uh, I actually ended up playing with people that it was using cheats uh, they were exploiting and every time somebody was caught doing that uh, there was these massive big forum threads and videos 
about me playing with cheaters, me playing with exploiters, me doing this and that and this. And I didn't even know that at the time that it was happening. And of course, I had to uh, ban and kick these people out. And then, of course, I had them against me as well. You see the pattern here? Now, H1Z1 was kind of different compared to Planetside and Battlefield. Battlefield and Planetside always have these people that have this massive need to prove themselves whether they are in my team or playing against me. This wasn't that obvious in H1Z1, but in H1Z1 I had much more problems with cheating and exploiters and all that stuff. And it was also in H1Z1 where I started streaming, and that kind of changed things to... Uh, a situation where it was more obvious that the harass that like the harassment became more consistent or more common uh, it wasn't worse it was just it, it just started happening more and more because it was obviously easier to find me when I was streaming now the biggest problem with people that wants to prove themselves if they are my teammates are the fact that they want to make um, they make a big deal about uh, the statistics, uh, kill and death ratio, kills per minute and all that stuff. And to a lot of people, it's really, really important to be on par or better than me. This is, this is like, this is a big, big deal to apparently a lot of people. However, when it gets clear that uh, I have a harder time getting a good score or getting good statistics based on the fact that I am always targeted by uh, people harassing me or people will always target me first if I'm if we're flying a, a bunch of people like you could do in planets you could be like 10 20 people flying together I was always the one being targeted first this is very very controversial for people that have this need to prove themselves because they of course want to make believe that it is just as difficult for them because otherwise it's not going to be all that uh, prestigious to have a good score compared to my score so this is something that people deny heavily no matter how obvious it is and Again, this goes back to the thing that I had a hard time dealing with, especially in Planetside, because I just had I, I just didn't know how to argue when people lie about things that everyone can see. It's like it's right there in front of you. It's right there in front of you. People even admit it from time to time. And you like even the same people that before when when we just got to know each other's they say that oh everyone on this server Miller everyone was hunting you when you go back to Mil to Miller a guy that says that who then becomes my friend and starts playing with me after a few months or half a year or something he then even though things get much much worse he then denies the same very fact the things that he said himself when I first met him and that at that time had escalated and become much much worse because now you have this rivalry for some reason which I still don't know why with getting uh, a lot of kills or a good KD or whatever which of course is easier for the ones who can benefit from the fact that I attract all the fire while they can farm easy kills. So now, what this has done is that it has made me very, very interested in human psychology, something that I've kind of neglected or haven't been interested in up until a couple of years ago. And unrelated to gaming, I came across something um, that I'm actually going to elaborate on on my Android Life channel, and it is about why people lie and why people are not interested in actual facts. It was a very, very interesting, but uh, yeah, a short but very interesting explanation that I got. But I have put a lot of thought into this. Why people lie? It, it, it's actually a genetic thing that goes back to like um, caveman genetics. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's fascinating. I'm, I'm gonna have to keep you on suspense on that one. Anyway, had I known about those things way back when uh, these. Um, uh, emotional kids were hunting me for prestige the following conversations after it would have gone very very differently nice. oh, thank you. I think he's a bit obsessed with me oh wait that's that could be one of my normal stream snipers actually it looks like that on the ping and the 
this area. So now, what I want to point out here is that I'm not trying to make it seem like my situation is worse than it is for these other streamers in the in the video that uh, I referred to in the beginning. Um, I don't know. One of the things that is really, really difficult to uh, compare here is the proportions of how much it happens and how bad it really is. But there are some things that I heard about from Ender that is worse for, for a few guys than it is for me when it comes to how it uh, uh, escalates over into real life because uh, I've had some um, uh, death threats I really have people that have uh, spammed my uh, my home address in the chat with they found it out and they they gave me some death threats and all that stuff um, but it never really got uh, past that so far anyway however um, what I didn't see that other streamers have done, like I'm always hiding my identity, I always keep changing my, uh, my in-game uh, identity all the time because I know that people will obsess with me if they recognize me, not only stream sniping or targeting me on purpose, but if they would recognize me on the server, they would go for me. So changing names like three times a week or something, it, that's what I do to minimize it. Um, I'm surprised that people that get hunted as much as they do don't do that, but it, I mean, obviously it doesn't work against dedicated stream snipers, but it does work to some degree against people that just uh, uh, once the, the game gets a little bit smaller, like in uh, Battlefield 1 now, when the game is so old, um, everybody kind of recognizes everybody, or more or less uh, among uh, the more hardcore or dedicated people, so it gets... For me, hiding my identity, it minimizes it a little bit. Not not the purpose, uh, not the stream sniping or the, the, the purpose harassment, but uh, the things aside from that. So now, this video could be like several hours long. I just don't have the energy to dig up all the memories here. Some of this goes back a long time. And even if I was only focusing on what's happened in the battlefield, um, yeah, that would still be a very, very long video. Now, for the ones of you that are relatively new to this aspect of, uh, of my content and me as a gamer, a streamer and so on, you might be wondering why are they doing this? Well, the, the obvious purpose seems to be to harass me to the point where I quit streaming, which uh, ironically has had the very opposite effect, at least the very recent um, few months, because uh, my, uh, my viewers on the stream has gone up quite significantly, especially at the, the night streams where I used to have like less than half of my afternoon streams or evening streams, I should say. It's also, of course, they've, they've tried to attack me financially make sure that I get uh, or th that they escalate the problems with uh, demonetization and stuff. Luckily, some of you guys have recognized this and uh, been uh, uh, very, very generous with your donations uh, and um, without that, it's very possible that I actually would have had to end streaming. But there are like, I would say like 30, maybe 40 of you guys that have consistently supported me in a way that has made my streams uh, stay up alive and consistent. So big massive thanks to all of you for your generosity and your support. So yes, the stream that I'm talking about, and I've been talking about throughout the whole video, uh, that one happens more or less daily on my main YouTube channel. Yes, this is my secondary YouTube channel, and I also have an in real life channel where I've started to try to get more and more active, especially with uh, shorts, the you know the TikTok version or the TikTok copy of uh, of YouTube where yeah, it's kind of funny, uh, TikTok copied YouTube and then YouTube copies TikTok back with uh, its uh, phone success. Yeah, it, it's funny how that goes, but that's on my in real life channel. So uh, I hope you will follow me and subscribe to me on my other two channels, obviously. And uh, yeah, big thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. And don't forget to comment in the comment section because otherwise you might not get notifications even if you have the notification bell on. So that is apparently a thing also. You need to interact 
with uh, some of us youtubers because otherwise youtube's uh, algorithms will randomly just happen to not show you when i go live or when i upload another video so i guess that's gonna have to be it for now big thanks for watching my friends bye for now I'm gonna need to heal up here. Oh!